Most of the suffering in the world is a result of our wrong choices, but not all of it. What about the suffering that's caused by natural disasters like volcanoes and floods and earthquakes? Bob White is Professor of Geophysics at Cambridge University. His job is to study natural disasters like volcanic eruptions. We asked him what kind of disasters cause the most harm. Uh, amazingly, the, the, the most disastrous of disasters that affect most people isn't earthquakes or volcanoes or those headline grabbing things, it's floods. Uh, and you'd think floods are very mundane things, but actually they, they kill more people every year than any other disaster. And there have been individual floods, such as one in 1970 in East Pakistan, which on one single night killed more than half a million people. Uh, it's astonishing, isn't it? And even in England, uh, within the last couple of years, there's been floods that have killed a few people. Um, so floods are really dangerous things, and it's reckoned that um, now about half the world's population is at risk of floods, and that's because we build our houses in river valleys and by the sea and so on, and they're inherently more liable to get flooded. I wrote a book on natural disasters recently, and I didn't actually call it natural disasters. I called it Who is to Blame? Uh, disasters, Nature and Acts of God, because in many ways there's no such thing as a natural disaster, although we talk about those all the time. What there are is natural processes on the earth, earthquakes, volcanoes, floods, that sort of thing, uh, which human agency often turns into disasters. Things like earthquakes, volcanoes, floods are actually essential to make this world a fertile place where we can live. Um, for instance, without uh, floods, um, floods were what enabled the Egyptians, for instance, to grow crops because every year the floods would deposit so, uh, alluvium over the riverbank and then that would make a fertile field. And if the floods failed, often people starved the next year. Uh, now that's, that's not the case today because we have irrigation, but floods in that context were a good thing. Um, volcanoes bring nutrients to the surface of the earth uh, from, the, from the deep uh, mantle of the earth. And practically all our nutrients have come through to the surface of the earth through, volcani through volcanoes. So volcanic islands are some of the most fertile, biodiverse areas on earth. Uh, I was in Hawaii recently and that is one of the most biodiverse areas of the world and yet it's one big volcano. Um, so volcanoes are essential for that. Uh, interestingly, volcanoes have also rescued us probably from uh, living in a, in a world that's covered by ice completely, uh, where humans couldn't exist, um, because naturally the world would be about 30 degrees C colder, so it'd be sub-zero all the time, if it weren't for some natural global warming from water vapour and carbon dioxide. And volcanoes have brought a lot of those gases to the surface. Um, even earthquakes, which you'd think uh, have no real use. <laughs> um, you wouldn't get the Himalayas or big mountain chains without earthquakes, because uh, that's how they get pushed up in the air. And of course, mountain belts like the Himalayas provide water for a billion people. Uh, as they get eroded, the, the erosional products are deposited as soils in the river valleys and we grow our crops. So even earthquakes are essential uh, to making the world fertile. If, if it was a flat world, we wouldn't have the weather and we wouldn't have that soil. So these natural processes are intrinsically good and I, I take that's I think that's why when God had made the world he said he saw everything he'd made he said it was very good. This was very good. <laughs> in 1969 there was a, a magnitude 7 earthquake in California a place called Loma Prieta. Uh, technically it was 10 kilometers deep it's what's called a strike slip fault and it killed 57 people. Uh, those people were killed when a two-storey bridge um, collapsed, the top storey on the bottom storey, and most of the people died when they were squashed in their cars. And they were in the process of strengthening that bridge, but they hadn't got to that section. Now, um, several decades later, in Haiti, in 2010, um, there was an identical-sized earthquake, uh, magnitude 7, 10 kilometres deep, strike slip fault, and that killed 230,000 people. And so why was that the case? They were identical earthquakes. Uh, now the reason was that in Haiti, which is the poorest nation in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, there'd been decades of corruption and misrule by Papadoc Duvalier and his son. 
Uh, there's huge corruption. People are living on landslide slopes where nobody should live in very cheaply constructed houses uh, made of concrete which fell on top of them and killed them. Now, it wasn't their fault that they died in the earthquake, um, but there was human agency involved because we know how to build houses that don't fall down. In fact, there, there was a mobile telecoms building in Haiti at the time, 13-storey, plate glass windows, and not a single plate glass window was broken. And yet, right next door to it, I've got a photo of this, uh, there was a three-storey hospital built just the year before in 2009, which collapsed and killed many people. So that is human agency in that respect, um, that these deaths were caused by human actions interacting with the natural processes and nowadays we have enough know-how to prevent most of that um, and sadly that wasn't the case in Haiti. So according to Professor White it's often what we do that turns a natural process into a disaster. It seems that most of the suffering from natural disasters is caused by our selfishness, greed, corruption and laziness. We know enough to stop this suffering but we don't seem to bother. But this still leaves some suffering that isn't caused by what we do. Why would a good God let that happen? We'll come back to this next time.